Hi there everybody, this is Martha Coleman with A to J Connections and you are watching the first episode of Idle Timeline. So here on Idle Timeline we are going to go back in time and then forward looking at different idols throughout the decades. We're going to start with the idol beginnings today in the 1970s and then we will continue all the way until the present and talk about how the world of idols has changed, who is popular in each decade, and uh, just give you a general bit of information about idols you should look into. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Today we are starting with the beginning of idols in the 1970s. So in the 1970s, idols were marketed quite a bit differently than they are in the present day. So in the 1970s, idols were considered very mysterious and their private lives were kept very secret from the public. And any sort of information that was shared with the public was heavily orchestrated by their agencies and by their staff. Idols were also seen as uh, something untouchable, very far away and inaccessible to the general public. And idol fans could only see their beloved idols through TV and radio shows, and members of fan clubs would get any information about new releases, events, concerts, and whatnot mailed to them through the post. So information was very slow coming back and forth between idols and their fans at that time. The lives of these idols were made to look very extravagant and luxurious, but in reality, these idols didn't really get to enjoy their staged luxurious lives because most of the time, they were monitored by staff, promoters, agents, and most of the money that was made on their albums, music, concerts, and whatnot all really went back to writers, producers, and musicians. So starting off on popular idols of that era, we're starting off with probably the most mysterious out of the three I'm going to introduce today, and we are starting with Momoe Yamaguchi. Momoe Yamaguchi started her career in 1972, and it lasted until 1980 when she retired from the industry suddenly to become a wife and mother. Now, Miss Yamaguchi is considered one of the most successful singers in Japanese music history, releasing 21 albums, 32 singles, and constantly participating in the television and film worlds. So at the age of 13, Yamaguchi auditioned via postcard for a show called Star Tanjo, or like Becoming a Star. She got accepted at the end of the competition. She ended up placing second and signing up with uh, Hori Productions, now known as Hori Pro. At the beginning of her career, her songs gained attention for their suggestive lyrics. For example, in her fifth single, Hito Natsu no Keiken, the lyric, I'll give you the most precious thing a girl has, is included. If you want to learn more about idols and their suggestive lyrics, check out the video on this channel on the panel Idol 18 Plus, the dark side of J-pop idols. Now, as her popularity began to rise, Yamaguchi eventually gained more control over her career and she was able to choose her songwriters. So she chose a husband and wife songwriting team who focused more on rock and roll songs. These songwriters had lyrics that reflected the image of a more mature woman who didn't have men do what they want with her and who could stand on her own two feet, which is something Yamaguchi wanted to reflect in her later singles. One such song was Yokosuka Story, which became a huge hit and her best-selling song of her career, selling at over 600,000 copies. Now the music towards the end of her career took on a more sophisticated style and continued with the rock and roll trend. And uh, one of her last albums, Phoenix Densetsu, was actually staged as a rock opera. At the age of 21, Yamaguchi was proposed to by Tomokazu Miyura, her frequent on-screen co-star, and she accepted his proposal. So in March of 1980, she made the announcement that she was going to be retiring from the entertainment industry to be a wife to Miyura. Yamaguchi released her last album, This Is My Trial, in October of 1980, and had her farewell concert in the same month. Yamaguchi released one last single titled Ichie with self penned lyrics on the same day that she and Miura were married, November 19, 1980. Now Yamaguchi retired at the peak of her popularity. Her popularity is still shown today. At any event that she is out with her family, it will make big news even if the event is quite mundane just because Momoe Yamaguchi is there and in the pictures. She is still well known among people in Japan and across the world today and she is one of the most influential idols in Japanese pop idol history. Moving on from a soloist 
to a group. This is Candies. Candies is considered one of the two representative idol groups of the 1970s, and they debuted in 1973 with three members, Ron, Sue, and Miki. The group had eight top ten songs over the course of their career, and they were quite popular with the younger population of Japan as they loved their great harmonies and very cute aesthetic. Now, Ron was the center of the group as the main singer, while Miki and Sue provided harmonies in the background that accented her very light and lovely voice. In 1977, the members of Candies decided that they wanted to go back to being regular girls, so in 1978, they held their farewell concert and then went their separate ways. Later on, Sue and Ron came on to become actresses, while Mickey did a brief stint in returning to singing. Even though their time as a group was relatively short, Candies is still considered a very influential idol group today, and a lot of idol groups from the early 2000s and onward have covered their songs. For example, the group Sweets in the early 2000s covered their hit Shochu Omimai Moshiagemasu, and Kyuto, a Hello Project group, covered that even a few years later. Korean idol group Orange Caramel covered Yasashi Akuma, another Candies hit, when they made their debut into the Japanese market. And last but not least, Least, their song Toshishita no Otokonoko was covered by the AVEX idol group Supergirls. There has been no new Candies content since 1978, but unreleased footage and repackaged DVDs are still being made, the newest one being released in 2015. The last group that I'm going to introduce today and the second representative idol group of the 1970s is Pink Lady. Now Pink Lady was a disco influenced group and was a lot more dance heavy than their counterparts Momoe Young, Gucci, and Candies. Now there are a lot of dance heavy idol groups today and without Pink Lady those groups would not have come to exist. Like their counterpart Momoe Yamaguchi, the members of Pink Lady, Mie and Kei, made their debut on Star Tanjo as a fresh faced duo in overalls and hats. But a few months later, when they came back on the show, their image had completely done a 180, and they were now a disco-styled group singing pop-style music. Pink Lady had a stream of nine number one hits. Five of those were considered million sellers by the Oricon charts. Their biggest selling single, UFO, sold 1.95 million copies. Meanwhile, their 1978 single, Chameleon Army, stayed on the charts for 63 weeks, which is a record that has yet to be broken in Japan. The girls soon signed many endorsement deals, and any product that Mie and Kei introduced immediately flew off the shelves. So Pink Lady not only slayed the music charts in Japan, but they also had their own anime TV series, feature film, and then went on to tackle the US market. As their sales began to slowly decline in Japan, Pink Lady decided to go to the US. They released their first English single, Kiss in the Dark, and that song made it to number 37 on the Billboard Top 40 charts. They are one out of only two Japanese artists to make it on the Billboard Top 40. Unfortunately, when they got back to Japan, they realized the disco trend had kind of faded out, and they tried to release a few more singles to get back up to their old popularity, but it just didn't quite work out. In 1981, Pink Lady disbanded, but they have come back together every few years for a reunion concert or two, new DVD releases, CD albums, and best of merchandise. So those are the most popular idols of the 1970s. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will leave some songs down below that I quite enjoy from each group so you can get a taste of what they sound like. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to A to J Connections, and check out our social media down below in the description box. You can also find my personal social media there, and you can come talk with me about the idols that we all love and support. Thank you so much for watching A to J Connections today, and thank you for watching Idol Timeline. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll tackle the idols of the 1980s. See you there!